Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome to Open Heavens Devotional Review for today. Tuesday, the 7th of May, 2024. I'm carrying the magic of Open Heavens is authored by that in the Lord, Pastor E.A. Adeboye, the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. Open Heavens is a guide to a close fellowship with God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are grateful for all that you do in our lives. Father, we just want to say, be thou exalted. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your word that transforms, that renews, that builds our confidence. We say, blessed be your name, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that you will teach us. You will, your sweet Holy Spirit will speak to us, will direct us, O Lord. Through your words in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That will be inspired, will be built to the glory of your name in Jesus' name. Amen. Today we are continuing the series we started yesterday, which is the snare of the fowler part two. The snare of the fowler part two. Our memory verse is taken from the book of First John 2 verse 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but of the world. A Bible reading is taken from the book of James 1, verse 12 to 16. I'm reading the NLT. God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Afterward, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. And remember, when you are being tempted, do not say God is tempting me. God is never tempted to do wrong and he never tempts anyone else. Temptation comes from our own desires which entice us and drags us away. These desires give birth to sinful actions and when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. So don't be misled, my dear brothers and sisters. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The message. Isaiah 49 verse 24 says, Shall the prey be taken from the mighty or the lawful captive delivered. According to the word of God, anyone who catches prey with the trap, with the trap like I described yesterday, can legally lay claim to it. They are lawful captives of the enemy. We have tried to cast demons out of people before, and they would say, You are you are trespassing because. This fellow belongs to us. They walked into our trap. For example, I once had a student who was on his way to, to his national youth call service station. When he fell sick, the doctor said he was allergic to rice. When they brought him to me, and as I was about to pray for him, the Lord said that he had to make restitution. It turned out his father stole a neighbor's bicycle to pay his school fees. And the owner placed a curse on that thief. His father died from an allergic reaction to rice. And now the son was on the same path. If that had not been revealed to me, we would have prayed in fertility because the boy was a lawful captive. I told him to buy a bicycle for the man's son because the man was late. Incidentally, when he returned after doing so, I was about to eat rice. He ate my rice, finished it, and nothing happened to him. Another boy was brought to me for prayers because he was barking. The boy had been having sex with their dog in the house. I prayed, but the barking did not stop. I advised the parents to keep bringing him for the Holy Ghost service every month and be hopeful that God will have mercy and deliver the lawful captive from his captor. When a fellow walks into the trap of the enemy, after being lured by his or her lost, the devil can lawfully lay a claim on the fellow. In our Bible reading for today, Apostle James tells us clearly that God does not tempt anymore, anyone. But rather, people are tempted by their own lust, which results in sin and then death eventually. The bait the devil uses does not usually look like death. The bait was three, has three major qualities to make it effective. 
It is usually attractive to the prey. It is pleasant to the prey's taste. And it invokes the prey's pride. I will discuss these qualities in details in the following days because I believe God that after this study, you will never fall into the devil's trap. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The topic once more is the snare of the fowler. And today we are looking at that snare, which is our own desire, our own desire. You know, like we read in the Bible reading for today, that temptation comes from our own desires, which entice us and drags us away. We could see how the devil tempted Jesus Christ. You know, we're told that this bait that the devil uses to trap people, you know, it would entice us, like Adadi described yesterday, of a trap. That there's always a bait that will not attract that that prey, you know, that that prey. So that once the prey sees that thing, he wants to, you know, take it. And before you know it, without the prey knowing it, it's actually a trap. You know, and we're told that this bait that the devil uses, it has three qualities. Number one, it is always attractive. You know, it is attractive. We spoke, the, the memory verse spoke about the lust of the eyes. And also, it is always pleasant to the priest tastes, you know, and it also spoke about the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life, that it, in, it invokes the pride of such a person. If you look at it, that the sin that man sins, they have these three qualities. They have either or any one of those qualities. And the devil uses this to trap people. And like we have been told, that they are lawful captives. And that is why the devil, you know, like that in the Lord said that anyone that falls into the trap that is set, any prey, such a person that set that trap actually can as a lawful claim over such prey. Can say, yes, you know, if you trap an animal, you can say, no, it's, the person will eat it. So that's what also the devil uses. He will use your own desire to entice such a person and drag the person. And the end result that the devil is trying to do is to destroy that person. We learned yesterday that the devil is like a roaring lion looking for whom he may devour. For you and I, the devil will not be able to devour us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So I've been told, like we're told yesterday, that we should be watchful. Praise the Lord. We saw how the two examples that are that in the Lord gave. That one, the man, because he saw the bicycle was beautiful, it was attractive to him. It was going to, you know, satisfy his ego because his child, they will say, yes, his child is going to school. If he doesn't have, he could have told the child to go and learn work. You know, go and find something to learn. Or, or maybe he should go and, you know, find a way. But because to satisfy his ego at the end of the day, and he thought the bicycle was attractive, it will, and maybe it will actually... You know, is of value and he can sell it and he decided to steal. And because there has been a sin, you know, that has been committed, like we read in the Bible reading, it says the desires give birth to sinful actions. Because of that desire, it has given birth to sinful action in that man's life. And when the sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. You saw that at the end of the day, the bicycle was actually a trap that the devil set for that man to destroy the man. Eventually, he committed that sin. The desire grew in him until he went, uh, he went ahead to sell that bicycle. And to him, you would think, yes, he's okay. Like we learned yesterday too, that the person will commit the sin and might be thinking it's okay until that sin will destroy such a person. And the devil laid claim. And whatever course that that man has given, he just started following the man because why? He has done what he has said. You know, there's a, he, the devil has the devil has held him captive. You know, and the the pronunciation of the owner of that of that bicycle caught up with him, and not just only him, unfortunately, even to the child, the innocent child, that he used that money to pay for his school fees. So we should be very careful. We should have self discipline and self control. You could see a, a, a human being that is being enticed by an animal, you know, because of the lust of his flesh. 
we read yesterday of people who are, you know, they have been seduced by an adulteress. And at the end of the day, there's nothing that adult, adulteress wants to do but to destroy such a person. So I think it is time that you evaluate your life. What are those things, those desires that is so strong in you? That, and you know that that desire will lead to death if you don't, will lead to a sinful action if you don't control it. Don't look at it as just a sinful action. And know that the end result of that sinful action is actually death. So we should be careful and this should bring a, a grip in us and cause you to turn around. Maybe there's a woman that you are loving. You know that, yes, you are already married or you are not even married. You know that, no, if you go into this, your body can't just, that is the devil. The devil tempted Jesus Christ. He said he should buy, he showed him beautiful things. Our wow, Lord Jesus Christ. You could see that even the category of the temptation has the lust of the lies, the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. That is he not the son of God. He wanted him to show himself. And he, should, and he said, no, he will not tempt the Lord his God. The lust of the flesh, because he knew he was hungry. Is it food? Is it things of the eyes? Is it our pride? You just want to show that you are there. And because of that, you want to do and undo. You want to go for a simple act to go for another way to get wealth. So that if somebody, so that you can also, they can know in your family that you have arrived. They can know in that your community that you have arrived. It is not worth it because the end result is death. The devil will only use those things to entice you so that he can lawfully capture you. And when even there is going to be deliverance, he will say, yes, I am there. Like we read that a lot of times, and that is the Lord said, a lot of times, they will want to do deliverance for people. And the devil will say that he is the one that is in charge of such a person's life. And remind them of the simple act that the person has done. You can see, unfortunately, for that man that was backing, they prayed for him. But I pray that the Lord would have shown that man mercy by now. So, and God said he will have mercy on whom he will have mercy on. You know, you, you can think that, yes, your case might be like that or that person. Well, it just might not be. It could end up in the death of such a person. And the person might not die physically, but he might have died spiritually. I pray in the name of Jesus that the Lord will open our eyes. He will minister it unto us. Even as at that day, the Lord has said, He's going to expatiate on this three. He's going to expatiate on the three major qualities of the bits that the devil uses to entrap people. I pray that the Lord will open our eyes, even as we as we go into this series, and He will deliver us from every snare of the fowlers. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The key point, it says, Beware of the things you lost after. They are baits of the devil that will lead to death eventually. In short, it might not be looking like sin. That's why the, 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 the word of God says we should be careful for every appearances of sin. It might not be looking like sin. It might start as your desire. If you are not careful, it could be that you are desperate to buy a car. If you are not careful. Because what the man wanted for his son to get, it was it, his desire was that he wants his child to graduate from university. It's not a bad thing, but if he allows that to consume him, the devil will take advantage of it. And it will lead to sin, which will eventually lead to death. Beware. Thank you so much for being part of the review for today. God bless you. Amen.